I have to make a serious video about this. The FTC and YouTube have been compromising a lot of content creators that I know due to the violation of COPPA. Now, what exactly is COPPA? Honestly, I don't know much about it, but from what I've heard, COPPA is a law of some sort that is devoted to the protection of children online. I think. Now content creators are required to mark their videos either as for kids and not for kids, including me. But the, there's a problem with that. And there are some bullet points that I want to point out on that problem. Number one, YouTube is forced to make these changes. I wanna, this is not exactly the a huge bullet point that uh, like is like entailed to this problem, but they're forced to do this. This isn't just them making the change because they like it. It's because they had to. Because of YouTube's violation of COPPA, they were compromised with a $170 million settlement. And that settlement costs a lot. $170 million is a lot. And this may be why that YouTube has been deteriorating over the past few years in regards to demonetization, account suspension, etc. So, if this really is true, then YouTube really has been doing the best that they can. Because, again, $170 million is a lot of money. Number two, here's the biggest, here's the biggest um, uh, bullet point that I have. The FTC does not understand the position of us cr content creators. They do not know what is considered a kid-friendly video and what is not considered a kid-friendly video. In fact, I used to be a kid-friendly YouTube channel. If you go to my very early videos, and I mean very, very early videos, the first few videos that I've been posting on YouTube, you will see that I've been barely swearing. I almost never swore back then. Also, I play just Pokemon. Aside from like a few Five Nights at Freddy's videos here and there, I've only played Pokemon. Now, as you know, my channel has grown to become a not so friendly, uh, not so kid friendly channel, but more of a mature channel that is targeted to teens or adults. But going back to videos and video games now, I still play Pokemon. But now I've spread to a lot, a few more other games, uh, a few other games, there we go, um, like Mario the Music Box, that's a prominent uh, series on the channel, Pokemon still, Smash Bros, and Dark Deception, look at all these games, you notice something off about one of them? Dark Deception is for sure not for kids, it's a horror game for God's sake, Mario the Music Box is very borderline, but it deals with serious topics of mental health. And I don't think that is for kids. <laughs> However, the system that the FTC is going to put in place is what decides if the video is kid-friendly or not. By technical terms, that technically means that YouTube system doesn't matter. And also, if you mark your uh, video as not kid friendly but is still seen as kid friendly to the FTC they will still punish you for that and you're fined with $42,000 I've heard what the fuck is that if they look at me playing Mario the music box their system is going to think that it is a kid friendly video and they're gonna be fining people for that the problem is they don't know it's a horror game. Mario the Music Box is a horror game. They just think, oh look, it's Mario, that's for kids. If the FTC did more research, they would know that of course Mario is for kids, but other people make other things out of it. Mario the Music Box is a prime example of that. And that's a whole nother topic. Now we're dealing with depression, suicide, anxiety, self-harm. Do any of those topics sound like it's for children? Any. Any of them. I didn't think so. Number three. How is all of this 
the content creator's fault. It's not my fault that people stumble across my videos and think that this guy is boring or entertaining. It's not my fault that they can't handle swearing. It's not my fault that the internet is so easily accessible. It's the child's fault that they are able to access the internet in the first place. I could also easily blame the parents too. Because the parents are the ones that, that allow their children to get away with this stuff. And they... They let themselves, they let them, their children get spoiled into YouTube. It's an, it, watching stuff on YouTube, I think it's an easy way to get addicted to things on the internet. I've learned that the hard way. So what, just because someone like Markiplier, or PewDiePie, or heck, Ninja! Just because they're found by some kid randomly scrolling through the internet, it's not the child's fault for finding them? What kind of logic is that? All in all, the FTC... And their law is a very flawed uh, system that they have. So it's unfortunate that YouTube is going to change. It's inevitable, but I think it's going to change. And another thing that I don't like about the FTC's um, system is that they were so vague as to what they are searching for in kid-friendly videos and not kid-friendly videos. Like, what the heck is a secondary market? I don't even understand that. I don't think anyone would understand that if, if they didn't do research on that. And it's the content creator's fault for this. Bullet point number four. What if the kid makes a fake account that fakes their age? What if the kid makes an account that fakes their age? What if they label it as them being 20 years old? What if they label it as 55 years old? But in reality, they're actually 8 years old. For one, you should not be allowed to do that regardless. And two, that's them going around the program of this law. It's not much to go with that because there is a huge uh, freaking loophole around that. So, yeah, that's that. Anyways, I can't do anything about this now because this law is going to be enforced starting next year. Starting the literal first day of next year. And if I'm targeted in order to pay a fine, that's it. YouTube is over and I'm going to be fined even from my broke account. I don't have any money. I've never gotten any single bit of money aside from a, like a few cents. That's all I have. And they're expecting me to pay $42,000 for each video that violates this law. If that's the case, then I can't do YouTube. YouTube is over. I can't do what I dreamed of doing. And I would have to go make content elsewhere. Like Twitch. I've never used Twitch before, and I don't ever plan on using Twitch. Mixer? What the fuck is Mixer? The only reason I've heard of that is because freaking Ninja was moving there. I cannot do anything else except for leaving a comment on the FTC's page to let your voice be heard. There's still time until December 9th where they will read all of these comments and then close it off for good. The YouTube channels that I know are now at currently at the edge of their seat. They are literally hanging on to the cliff. They're about to fall off the cliff. And they're hanging on with just one hand. They either get punished or they don't get punished. I might be one of them that gets punished. If this is truly the end of my YouTube channel, then I had a great time on YouTube. But I don't want this to be the end. And if it is... 
What else can I do? What else can I do?